Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina, and it's time for that Sunday night live stream show. That's right, it's Sunday night, y'all, and we are getting on our Sunday night live stream show. Hopefully everybody's ready for a good show tonight. We've got some good stuff lined up for you guys. We're going to be talking all about nearshore and offshore fishing tips, tricks, and more, answering your questions live giving away free stuff, and talking fishing and weather and much, much more. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, and uh, let's talk fishing. Don't forget, if you have a question, you can text that question in right here to that phone number you see uh, in the bottom corner there, and that's how your questions get answered live during the show. What's up, Tim Harris? Thanks for the stars, buddy. Uh, so again, if you want your questions answered live, you got to text that phone number. If you comment in the video, we always appreciate that, but your comments disappear quickly and we can't always answer your questions if you just simply text them in. So make sure to text or uh, comment. We can't always see them. So make sure you text in your questions. Sam, sure. Appreciate the stars, buddy. Thank you very much. And uh, appreciate everybody else who sent us stars while we got rolling there. Uh, we are going to be getting started here shortly, just finishing up a last uh, couple items before we get into our photos of inshore and nearshore fishing. Robert Holshauser, appreciate you, man. Thanks for sending those stars. If you're watching on YouTube, the stars are just a way for people on Facebook to show their support. Helps us to do more cool stuff like this studio, for example, is brought to you by all of you who sent stars every week. Appreciate you guys. D. Beers, Richard Blasak, thank you very much. And um, don't forget as well, we're going to be giving away free trips tonight. In order to win those free trips, you do have to comment one time on the video. We'd also appreciate if you like the video on Facebook or give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to Hubbard's Marina on YouTube. Our subscribers are slowly going up, and we're trying to break that 10,000 subscribers barrier. So help us out. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We would appreciate it. We're going to get rolling here into those photos and show you guys what we've been seeing inshore. Harry Smith, appreciate that, man. Thanks for sending some stars. Uh, so black drum, we've been seeing the black drum bite picking up slowly, definitely seeing a lot of them more towards the back bay area around the mouths of rivers, bayous, creeks, and around different large structure areas. Adam Franklin, appreciate those 500 stars, man. Tim Mancala, M Malenka, and uh, Catherine Naranjo, appreciate those stars as well. Thank you, guys. Mangrove snapper bite's been going really well around all the structures. Docks, bridges, piers, jetties, lots of mangrove snapper still. Water is starting to cool, so those mangroves are going to start thinning out a little bit. So take advantage of them while you can. Sean Porchke, appreciate those stars, buddy. Thanks, man. Redfish bite has been off the chain, as you can see here. A lot of redfish lately around the sandy areas, those edges of grass flats, bridges, piers, jetties around Hubbard's Marina. We've been seeing a lot of redfish. And then also oyster bars and following those schools of mullet in the bay. All great places to find redfish. Tim Dykes, Terry Feather, appreciate those stars. Paul Carteau, appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Uh, redfish have been biting really well early morning hours and through the day too. Slow moving soft plastics is definitely a crowd favorite redfish wise. We've been seeing some decent snook action too, mostly at night around bridge lights and dock lights early morning. We're seeing them during the day, but they're a little trickier. You got to hit them on that perfect tide to get them feeding a lot of juvenile snook on the flats there's still some snook out on the beaches uh, my friend uh, Scott Sadorf kind of the the beach snook fishing ninja guru if you will uh, legend uh, I would go so far to call him a beach snook fishing legend 
uh, has even caught some really big snook lately on the beaches. So they're still out there on the beach, but a lot of them starting already to move towards those back bay areas. As water temperatures fall this time of year, the snook move off the beaches, out of the passes, and stack more towards the back bay waters uh, to hide out from those cooling temperatures. Uh, trout bites been going pretty decently. A lot of the big trout have been a little harder to find, but hopefully this red tide situation is backtracking and uh, should hopefully bring us some better trout action, especially as water cools. Typically, trout action picks up considerably. Mike Hart, appreciate those stars, buddy. Thanks. Uh, also, the, the trout have been loving those soft plastics. The paddle tails are definitely a popular item for the trout. Uh, I was doing the radio show this past Saturday with Captain Ray Markham. I think everybody that I talked to who is heavy into inshore fishing right now is all about soft plastic paddle tails. Now, uh, Captain Ray Markham was all about that DOA cow shad. Now, the cow shad is still a paddle tail, but it's kind of more of a, a shad style bait where a lot of paddle tails are more of kind of like a minnow style bait. So it was a little different to hear kind of the, the change in preference uh, and Captain Ray Markham, he makes a living fishing inshore uh, on virtually almost exclusively artificial lures. So it's pretty interesting. Also, what's interesting about Captain Ray Markham and his kind of, uh, I guess uh, I'm trying to think of the fancy word and I can't, totally drew a blank. <laughs> but he typically only fishes artificials. And what's interesting about that compared to other charter captains who fish inshore with live bait, for example, they'll go out early, they'll cast net their bait, and uh, they fish when the clients are available most times, typically from around 8 a.m. to about noon or 8 a.m. to 1, 2 in the afternoon. Uh, whereas Captain Ray Markham will fish the tides because he's hunting with those artificial lures, trying to cover a large area of flats. So he will dedicate the charter around the tides, which is different from a lot of charters that you go on inshore. Because when you're have when you have a live well blacked out with live greenbacks and shrimp and other assorted live baits, you can get up on a flat, you can chum. You can throw out greenbacks, and you can artificially get those fish to start feeding well. Uh, whereas if you're using artificial lures and covering a large area, if they're not feeding, they're not feeding. Uh, so it's it's definitely kind of a different technique when it comes to inshore fishing, which I thought was interesting for sure. So interesting there. Uh, now we're going to get into the nearshore photos. Uh, we're going to show you what we've been seeing near shore and offshore. And uh, definitely been some pretty good action near shore and offshore. This is uh, some big redfish we saw on the hub the other day uh, on a hub private fishing charter. This time of year, we have a lot of those big redfish uh, moving near shore to spawn. So we occasionally will run into big schools of redfish as they move offshore to spawn or they're on their way back inshore from spawning and uh, we'll accidentally run into them while bottom fishing. And it's always exciting to have two, three, four people hook up with these big bull reds offshore when uh, you're not expecting it. So this was definitely an excitement uh, to a five-hour half-day private charter aboard the hub. And uh, we've also been seeing... Plentiful uh, gag grouper action. Now the gags are definitely a little bit further and are fewer and further between near shore. We've been seeing most of the gag grouper action out deeper. The deeper we go, typically the more uh, prolific the gag grouper will get, and the more aggressive too. Uh, so much better gag grouper action once we get past about 120 to 140 foot of water. So the longer range trips definitely give you a good shot at gags where the near shore shallower water trips right now in our area are doing not so well on finding a large number of gag grouper, unfortunately. But hopefully that'll change up as that water temperature starts to cool. A lot of times those big gags will start moving inshore more and more. So we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping for the best there. 
Uh, we've been seeing some big mangrove snapper. This was from our 12-hour night snapper trip. The 12-hour night snapper trip's been doing well on big mangroves. We've been seeing nice mangrove snapper out there on our 39-hour trips, the 12-hour extreme trips, doing really well on nice mangrove snapper. So great time to get out there and hunt mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper, big vermilions, porgies, and uh, have a chance at these gag grouper and scamp grouper too. Uh, we've been seeing monster scamp and a variety of scamp even near shore in shallower waters, we're seeing some of those scamp grouper, but just a little smaller. Now, this was from our kind of crew uh, crew and captain's fun fishing trip this past Monday. Uh, we went out there on the Flying Hub 2. We fished about 180 to about 220 foot of water and just absolutely destroyed the fish. Uh, good thing red grouper have closed because if they were open, we would have ran out of ice and cooler space <laughs> about halfway through this trip. It was absolutely insane. The fishing was just nonstop. The first spot was just, I mean, I caught eight keeper mangroves on the first spot. So almost a limit of mangrove snapper in one fishing spot. It was nuts. That's how good the bite was. It was a, a great day out there on the water. We caught a lot of big scamp grouper, uh, big vermilions, yellowtails, big porgies. We caught monster red grouper. We had to catch and release. But, uh, oh, and big red snapper. I think I had probably two red snapper that would have pushed 18 to 20 pounds. So definitely a great trip and a lot of fun for our captains and crew. Here's one of those big red grouper we caught and released that day. Just absolute tanks out there uh, on the Flying Hub 2. Uh, unfortunately, having to catch and release them, but the big gags and scamp are making up for it. More scamp than gags, but still pretty cool. Larry White, appreciate those stars, man. Now, this is a cool story. This is uh, a young angler, Anthony Knott Jr. He went out there on our 39-hour fishing trip, and he was registered for the CCA Star Tournament. He went out there on a 39-hour trip, fished the 39-hour trip just like everybody else, but he was registered for the CCA Star Tournament. So when he came back in, he registered all the fish that he had caught during that 39-hour trip. And guess what happened? He went to the CCA Star Banquet, and he won a $5,000 youth scholarship for going fishing on a 39-hour trip with his dad. Pretty awesome and such a cool story. Uh, really appreciate you guys sharing that story with us. Super proud of uh, young Anthony and his accomplishment there for fishing. Five grand for going fishing. Pretty awesome. CCA Star Tournament. Definitely don't want to miss out on that next year, guys. Great way to earn money while offshore fishing. You might even win a boat. Someone else I know won a brand new Pathfinder. All they did was go fishing pretty crazy. So I played around today and made some graphics instead of talking about weather and jumping between different websites. Uh, I tried to uh, make it a little easier and put all the weather into one easy to look at graphic. Josh said it sucks, but you be the judge. You're, you're yeah, I see you over there. I never said it sucks. You said it Those sucked. aren't the words you laughed I at used. It. I, my feelings were hurt, guys. Dylan, you don't. Do you have feelings? <laughs> <laughs> so the top of this graphic shows uh, the wind from our wind finder forecast at the Egmont Key Buoy. Uh, you can see here, starting from today all the way through Tuesday, winds are less than 15 knots. Basically, we get a little brief period of around 15 to 20 Thursday night into Friday. I think that's just the frontal boundaries kind of fighting each other uh, because right now we kind of have an occluded front moving past us, a little low pressure uh, has moved past. It became an occluded front, tried to back up a little bit, but it stopped. Now that's all going to clear out of the way here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to have a high pressure settling in and then kind of a low pressure starts pushing down. So I'd assume this little 
brief period of higher winds is that low pressure and high pressure kind of fighting over our area. It's called a pressure ridge, which gives us that momentary uh, increased wind. So that's probably what we're seeing there Thursday night into Friday morning. But very moderate winds through the week, less than 10 to 15 knots, less than two foot seas, beautiful weather as far as the eye can see, which is great. We're coming up on that first quarter moon uh, Tuesday, and then the full moons later October 20th. Uh, so we kind of have a little bit of lame tides over the next Basically, Tuesday through the rest of the week is a little lame on the tidal front, not too much moving water inshore, but some big tides, some big, big hill tides, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got about 23% of the moon visible. We've got a very moderate week uh, rain-wise, uh, very low chances of rain, and that's thanks to the high pressure sitting above us. So you can see here, this was today. That low pressure is moving out of the area. The, this is tomorrow. That occluded front is sliding out. And then you can see over here Tuesday uh, that low pressure starts to build up to our northwest. And then as we move into the next graphic, uh, it'll show you Wednesday. And Wednesday, that high pressure starts to move down. This is Thursday over here in the middle of the screen as that high pressure settles in. Friday, high pressure still on top of us. Saturday, that high pressure starts to slide out of the area as that low pressure dips into the Gulf finally. Sunday, that low pressure moves through. So lots of kind of movement, but all very moderate wind conditions. So the highlights this week is that high pressure moving in around Wednesday and then low pressure approaching and passing Sunday. But as we saw in the first graphic, the wind never really gets up. So this isn't going to be a super strong cold front. It's not going to be a super strong high pressure. So all this to mean all week long, we're going to have a little drier conditions. It's going to be hot. There's not going to be a lot of cloud cover. Rain chances are going to be low. That's the important thing that you guys need to know. Uh, and then next, red tide. Red tide is finally a little bit of good news on the red tide front. This far left graphic is the coastal red tide forecast. Excuse me. So you can see here south shore or uh, south entrance to Tampa Bay around Anna Maria area. Definitely dealing with a little bit of a red tide bloom uh, around the southwest side of Pinellas County. We've got a little bit of a medium concentration, but Johns Pass is finally on all three, not only the coastal forecast, but the upper water column and low water column. Finally, John's Pass is clear. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and my toes crossed that hopefully this will remain true. If this remains true, we could finally start to catch and keep our live bait uh, alive. So tomorrow, our live bait guy, uh, Brian Harris, is back into action. He's going to go try to catch some live bait for our Tuesday 10-hour all day. And I'm hoping we can go out and catch pinfish and keep them alive. That is the ultimate goal, right? And then be able to get them offshore for our fishing trips, obviously, too. So we shall see. Tomorrow will be the day in which we find out whether or not those pinfish will stay alive for us. Real quick, want to give a shout out to the events we have coming up. We got a lot of different events coming up this Wednesday, this very Wednesday, not tomorrow, not the next day, the day after that, Wednesday, October 13th, uh, we have the Fat Cat Tavern Fishing Club meeting. Uh, show up around 6 to grab some food and some drinks. Meeting starts at 7, and uh, we're going to be doing a fishing conversation, talking all about nearshore and offshore fishing, answering your questions. And uh, we won't, I, I will try to stream that live. But it is awfully loud in there, and I don't know how good of an internet connection I'm going to have. So I might not be able to stream it, but I will record it. And we will be posting it to our YouTube channel and uh, sharing it on our Facebook page and on our website too. So we'll definitely have that seminar up on the website a few days after that seminar if we can't stream it live. So hopefully we'll see you in person, but if you can't make it, we'll make sure you can see 
uh, the outcome of that seminar. And then October 23rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we're going to be out there at the Gandy Bridge with the Tampa Bay Fishing Club doing the Gandy Bridge cleanup. And uh, we're going to be giving away some free fishing trips for coming out and getting involved and picking up some trash around our local fishing area. And then Tuesday, October 26th, we've got the Real Animals Fishing Conversation. Uh, That's happening at Furman, Newport, Ritchie, uh, on the corner of State Road 54 and US 19. Uh, Captain Mike Anderson will have Captain Steve Benton as his guest and they'll be live streaming that fishing conversation that night. So definitely tune in for that. I will not be there that week. I'll be in Orange Beach, Alabama at a National Marine Fisheries meeting. But still lots of great information coming from those two guys. And then huge news. Huge news. This is groundbreaking for me. Bass Pro called. Guess what, guys? We're back. Bass Pro called, and we're back. Uh, or, uh, November 6th, uh, the Hubbard's Marina truck is bringing Santa Claus to town. And uh, Bass Pro called and said, we're finally allowed to do our Santa parade again. Can you bring your truck and bring Santa Claus in and be a part of the parade? And I was like, wait a minute. You're going to have a Santa Claus parade? There's going to be like 400 people in the parking lot, and I'm not allowed to do seminars? And she was like, well, that's part of the reason I'm calling too, or you want to do a seminar. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it the same day. I already got to be there for a Santa parade. Let's do a fishing seminar too. So Saturday, November 6th, 2 p.m. is the fishing seminar. Santa parade is 5 p.m. So Santa will be coming to Bass Pro Shop Saturday, November 6th, 5 p.m. And Dylan Hubbard, We'll be doing a seminar at 2 p.m., so <laughs> great time to come out and visit the Tampa Bass Pro Shops Saturday, November 6th. Excited to have those events back, and uh, they do not require masks inside Bass Pro Shops to answer your next question. That was my first question, too. Uh, Thursday, November 11th, we have our CCA Star Banquet, so uh, definitely join us for that. Going to have steak dinners, raffling off. Uh, fire, uh, firearms, uh, hotel stays, vacations. It's going to be awesome. So join us for that as well. With that, uh, let's go ahead and give away our first free trip of the night. First free trip of the night. We're going to be giving away our five-hour half day for two guests. Five-hour half day for two guests. Let's see who won that first free trip of the night. Josh, let's see who won our five-hour half day for two guests. Winner is LaShonda Brown. LaShonda Brown, congratulations on your win. What's up? Freezing up. Yes. LaShonda Brown was the winner of that free five-hour half day for two guests. Where's the thing that tells us if we drop frames? Hmm. Freezing up. When are they installing that new fiber? Talk to Forrest. Uh, so they ran it out to the pole yeah, they're just uh, waiting last on week. Hardware. Now they're waiting to run it from literally right across the street. Literally, there's a box right there. I'll run it right now. Straight up. <laughs> give me a give me a, a cable. But, uh, give me some wire cutters. <laughs> it, it was actually, he said that, he said this Friday that it was supposed to be this week. This week it's go. supposed to get installed. It's in the mail. Check is in the mail, folks, on the fiber internet service that we signed a contract for. Forever ago. Eight months ago. That's like our phones. We ordered these new fancy voice over IP phones for Hubbard's Marina. I literally signed the contract in, like, January of this year. It is October 10th, and they literally just got installed last week. It's crazy. It's a crazy world we're living in right now. Looks like our internet issues seem to have gone away now. On our end, at least, it's showing that it's healed up a little bit, so that's good. So hopefully you're back. LaShonda Brown, you are the lucky winner of our five-hour half day for two guests. November 6th, 
Uh, don't forget to tune in er, November 6th. Don't forget to join us at the Tampa Bass Pro Shops for that seminar. Definitely going to be a good time. Also, don't forget October 15th, we've got our Red Snapper season reopening October 15th, and that is going to run until end of day November 5th. So October 15th through end of day November 5th, we have Red Snapper season reopening. So good uh, good news there. The live bait update I already talked about. We're going to start catching them tomorrow, hopefully, and have them Tuesday for our 10-hour trip. No guarantee, though. We're going to go ahead and, and test it out before we celebrate too early. Our online store is super cool. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can get cool new hats like the one I'm wearing and many more cool uh, apparels and apparel items and tackle on our online store at hubbardsmarina.com. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely do so after the show. Just go to hubbardsmarina.com, click shop, and click marina store. You'll uh, or you could just visit shop.hubbardsmarina.com and see all the cool uh, new stuff that we have on the online store. You won't regret it. The kingfish are around. Uh, definitely starting to see those kingfish. We caught a couple of them on our five-hour half day, 10-hour all day. And uh, the red tide kind of blew up a little bit and pushed them away a little bit. But we're hoping they'll be right back uh, on, uh, on the beaches here on the backside of this red tide. Uh, bloom. A couple of people are asking in the comments who won the five-hour half day uh, for two guests. That was LaShonda Brown. She won. And the freezing issues are all gone, so if you're still having problems, refresh, and uh, you should not have any issues. If you restart your feed by refreshing your page or just getting out of the Facebook app or YouTube app and reopen it, you shouldn't have an issue when those occur, it's very, very momentary, and uh, typically it goes away quickly. But like I said, we already paid for and signed a contract for better fiber internet service. We're just waiting on install, which uh, should hopefully be this week. So fingers crossed on that. Also, uh, Amberjack, Greater Amberjack season is still open. That goes to the end of this month, and we're hoping to catch a few more of them before Amberjack season closes at the end of this month. Uh, really hoping and praying we get another good push of Amberjack. Um, we've been seeing an incredible snapper bite. Definitely, definitely doing well on mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper, porgies, vermilions, red snapper. We're seeing them. We're trying to avoid them. Uh, but October uh, 15th, red snapper season reopens. So we're very excited about that. And then uh, don't forget to check out our new social media accounts. We've got uh, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Snapchat. We do it all. So if you haven't checked the Pinterest, uh, along with Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. So if you haven't checked out those uh, different social media platforms, make sure you do and follow us there too. Uh, I, I post to Twitter a lot, and I get like one like on my tweets. It's very, very depressing over there. Dude, Twitter's a thing. Twitter's a thing. I wouldn't be tweeting if it wasn't a thing. Back to what we were talking about, that special. Where... Oh, yeah, the Dave Chappelle special. <laughs> if you haven't watched Twitter's that one, that bang. one's crazy. Twitter's yeah. <laughs> Supporters after show. We'll talk more about that. Definitely, <laughs> Dave Chappelle is not main show content. <laughs> yeah, I grew up with Twitter, and I don't, I don't even use Twitter. I never used Twitter I don't until really... most recently. Because well, I mean, it's understandable. We got some new software that, that allows us to post a, everything easy, so it's pretty cool in that respect. Business point of view, yes, but personal use, eh. Oh, yeah. Personally, I never go on social media. <laughs> Only time I, I do is to post for... I don't have, a, I don't have any social media That's what accounts. kills me. People will message me on my <laughs> personal page, and I don't check my personal page a lot because it gets so much spam. It's crazy. I mean, you think... 400, 500 emails a day is bad. You should see my personal Facebook page messages. And half the time, it's like fake accounts sending me stuff you wouldn't want to open in your office. So uh, it's definitely one of those things I don't check often. And people get so upset when they message me personally on Facebook that I don't see your message. Message the business. 
we have a whole suite of softwares <laughs> to make sure when you message Hubbard's Marine on Facebook or you text us or, I don't know, here's a novel idea, call. Call our office line that we're someone's or there to text. answer your message. Or text, text our office line. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of people that answer the texts to our office line if you text that number down there. So definitely uh, um, a great option uh, if you uh, want to get a hold of me. A uh, better option than messaging my personal Facebook page that I don't check. Dylan's Never. always at work, so your best bet to catch him is at work. <laughs> yeah, and my business phone rings through to my cell phone, so definitely the best way to get a hold of me is to call my business phone. Oh, you know, speaking, my cell phone. speaking of texting, yeah, how about them questions? They can, if they have a question, instead of posting it there on Facebook, they can go ahead and text their question to that number right there. Yep, exactly. You hit the nail on the head, Josh. Last announcement before we get into your questions. Don't forget, every Saturday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., we've got our Real Animals radio show, News Radio 970 WFLA. You can call into the radio show, 1-800-969-9352. If you haven't listened before, it's a pretty cool show. And uh, this weekend, again, uh, Captain uh, Mike Anderson is not home. Not in the studio, so I think he's uh, taking advantage of you. I, I love it. <laughs> he can he can take all the vacation time he needs. I don't mind being in uh, in the driver's seat over there for the radio show. So uh, hopefully he doesn't leave too long. You know, people will start liking uh, start liking the new host. No, I'm just kidding. He does a great job. I've learned a lot working with him, and it's definitely a ton of fun. So if you haven't checked out the Real Animals Radio Show, definitely do so. This Saturday will be a special one. Uh, my special guest this weekend is Emily Muelstein. She's the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council Public Information Officer, and uh, she's in charge of getting all the great, great news that always comes out of the Gulf Council to the peoples. So she has a really tough job because she's in charge of sending out those emails and Facebook things, and uh, she has to uh, respond to all the the loving comments that people leave so i feel for her and uh <laughs> she has a tough job but definitely uh join us next week for the real animals radio show we're going to be talking to her more about the council process fishing regulations how it all works what's going on we'll have a great conversation about that stuff so make sure you tune in it'll be interesting plus it'll play live right here on the hubbard's marina facebook and youtube channels so you can listen on the radio, you can listen on the iHeartMedia app, or you can watch it right here on the Facebook pages. With that, let's see what questions we got, Josh. If I bring my trolling rod and reel, do I need planers in skirts? What about ballyhoo? So need a little bit more information there. Uh, if you bring your trolling rod and reel, if you have planers and skirts or planers and spoons, that works really well for the first 25 miles or so, 25 to 35 miles. So if you're doing like a five-hour half day, you just need a trolling rod, planers, and spoons. If you're doing like a 39-hour, you need a trolling rod, planers, and spoons. And then once you get about 25, 30 miles out, you want to switch that planer and spoon out Typically, we use those Nomad DTX minnows or the Rapala x wraps all listed right there on the Hubbard's Marina online store. We also have them in our main store when you show up for your trip, too, so you can get them from us, what we recommend. We also have trolling skirts, too. Not a lot of people troll Ballyhoo on the party boats just because we're going about nine knots, which is a little fast to troll those Ballyhoo. And... It's not super common in our area. If you were down in like the Caribbean, uh, the Keys, the Bahamas, that's more common. Uh, whereas in our coast, most of the tra most of the time we're tr uh, trolling those diving plugs, those like Shimano Bonitas or uh, the Nomad Mad Max or trolling skirts. That's predominantly what we use. What's the best best Beth? What's the best method for Spanish mackerel and kingfish just off the beach? The best method in my mind is trolling around uh, with a planer and spoon, like a number one, number two planer, 
about 15 to 18 feet of about uh, 60 pound, 40 to 60 pound, um, probably 60 pound monofilament between your planer and spoon. Uh, snap swivel on both sides and uh, troll at about four to nine knots, uh, depending on your boat. And uh, troll that around at varying lengths, at varying speeds until you find them. And then once you find them, you can just keep trolling figure eight loops around the edges of that school of bait that the kingfish and mackerel are working. Or you can stop and drift through the school and uh, bring a blacked out live well full of live baits. You can throw a few netfuls of chum uh, out and use long shank number number one, number two, J hooks and uh, cast out there with around 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader and a softer action uh, tipped rod, uh, conventional with good uh, braid backing and uh, cast out there and free line some thread fin or some big green backs for a chance at one of those big mackerel or kingfish. Josh, that's super distracting, bro. Uh, I, I apologize. It just came out. I didn't even it's like you meant to sneeze. No, I, I didn't even have time to prepare. It was just there. It was like, hello. <laughs> All right, let's see what other questions we have. Can't find your YouTube channel. What is the name? It's Hubbard's Marina. So on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, Pinterest, our account name is Hubbard's Marina. It's that, it's that easy. It's Hubbard's Marina across the board. That's how you know we've been around a while. We've been doing this a minute. <laughs> Smokey actually beat me to Hubbard's Marina on Twitter. I had to uh, trick him, finesse him out of the Hubbard's Marina, the at Hubbard's Marina account. Yeah, like four or five years ago when Twitter was actually still a thing, uh, Smokey wouldn't give it to me. He was playing games, so I had to let him forget about it, and then I brought it up the other day. I was like, hey, man, you still got that? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, can I see your phone? He's like, okay. Yeah, got it. Got it. Took me five minutes flat to transfer the account, change the password and the phone number. So you mean we've <laughs> had him, him what? running around wild. Oh, yeah. Smokey's had the Hubbard's Arena Twitter account for like a long time. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with. Our crew and captains, they're very, hey. very smart. <laughs> hey, but at least they take it into their own hands, you yeah. know? No, they're motivated. Uh, Dusty has uh, Hubbard's Marina 1928 on Twitter. Yeah. yeah they, they're on top of things out there. Can a five-hour trip go out far enough to catch Red Snapper? No. Five hours, ten hours, no way to catch Red Snapper on those trips. But we do catch Red Snapper on our 12-hour uh, extreme trips, on our 39-hour trips, all great options for those red snapper adventures. So if you want to get out there and catch red snapper, the 12-hour extreme trip, 39-hour trip, long-range private charters, definitely the best option uh, for red snapper. Will live bait be available this week? We talked about that earlier where we are going out to hopefully catch them tomorrow. And uh, we'll find out if uh, live bait's going to be available tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll be able to catch them. We'll find a bunch of them. We'll catch a bunch of them. And we'll be able to take them back to the dock and keep them alive. And uh, if that's the case, then we'll have plenty of live pinfish for our extended red snapper uh, season, which is the goal. Uh, do you still do the fish pot? And if so, how much is it? Uh, so we typically do the 12 or on the 39 hour trip, excuse me, we do the big fish jackpot. Uh, so yes, we still do the jackpot on the long range overnight trips. And um, it's typically about uh, $20 to enter the jackpot on those long range trips. But the prices do vary depending on what's in season and what we're targeting. Like if a lot of fish are in season, sometimes a jackpot jackpot might be increased in price in order to make each category a little bit better paid so that's ultimately up to the captain's discretion at the trip and a lot of times the captain will kind of pull the group and say hey you guys want to increase it to 25 bucks or 30 bucks uh so that way uh we can make it a better um 
pot. So also someone asked about fluorocarbon at night. So typically when I'm offshore fishing, I like using fluorocarbon leaders all the time, whether it's at night or during the day. The reason why is it's just a little stiffer, it has less memory, and it has more abrasion resistance. So if you do get up against the rocks, uh, it gives you a little bit more forgiveness. So I like using fluorocarbon all the time, especially snapper fishing. They have those teeth that rubs on that line, and uh, it's just a good idea to have a little bit more abrasion resistance. So uh, that's why I like fluorocarbon. So next one is, oh, they were upset with our live shows lately because it keeps going in and out. Well, unfortunately, I don't have control over internet signals. So if the spotty internet signal that occasionally happens from time to time for a minute or two is enough to upset you and run you off from the show, I apologize. Not much I can do about that. So disappointing. And as I talk about it, it looks like people are commenting again that it's frozen. Yay! <laughs> so, frustrating. No one's more frustrated when it has these intermittent internet issues than me. Trust me, because uh, I don't take four or five hours a week out of my week with my two young children and my business to come here and talk to you for an hour for fun. I like a lot of people to enjoy the show, so... When the internet has issues, uh, it frustrates me more than you, trust me. And I repeated the winner of the five-hour half day a few times. If you missed it again, it was LaShonda Brown. She already claimed it and sent us her address. So the winner of the trip did uh, claim the trip. So I apologize if you missed the five-hour drawing due to the internet issues, but you did not win the trip. So thanks for watching and your comment. Let's Speaking of free trips, let's give away another one. Now that the uh, freezing issue went away, let's uh, see who won a 10-hour all-day for two guests. 10-hour all-day for two guests. Uh, let's see who won. <laughs> Woodrow Wilson. President Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, from Lutz, won a 10-hour all-day for two guests. Congratulations on that. That is a $218 value. Uh, very, very uh, good win there, Woodrow Wilson. So make sure you claim it by texting us your full home address to that phone number right there. And again, that was Woodrow Wilson if you missed it. So... You have about five minutes to text that full, uh, home address to that phone number right there in the bottom corner, and that's how you claim your free trip. Willie Solowski, appreciate those stars, buddy. Thank you, man. Uh, do you allow braid to be used on the boats? Yes, we allow braid as long as it's not causing issues and as long as you don't mind using a monofilament or fluorocarbon top shot on the braid. So as long as it's not causing issue, issues, you're using a top shot, uh, braid is okay, but you really don't need braid. I find I find more and more often that we talk about we talk about braid here and there uh, occasionally during videos, and people ask about top shots a lot. And more and more, I kind of find that people think they need braid or really want braid. You really don't need it, especially nowadays with these high end reels and these fancier rods. You can feel the bite. Now, if you're planning on doing deep drop fishing or you want a flat line for tuna or wahoo, then yeah, braid backing might be a good idea. But you could put 250, 350, 400 yards of monofilament over some braid backing and fish all mono and still uh, do well and catch plenty of fish. So I would strongly recommend going... Uh, ultimately full mono if you buy a new reel and you're trying to decide what to do do mono you don't need braid especially with newer technologies uh are they targeting amberjack and red snapper or just red snapper for the start of the extended red snapper season so amberjack fishing hasn't been all that great now where we fish for red snapper is deep past 140 to 160 foot of water and in that area we do occasionally run across those big amberjack 
So, yes, we will probably throw in a spot or two that has Amberjack on it or the chance for Amberjack will be there, but we're not going to target Amberjack. We're going to target Red Snapper, then we're going to target uh, Gag Grouper, Mangrove Snapper, and maybe throw in a spot or two for Amberjack. But the Amberjack bite's not, like, on fire. We're catching huge numbers of Amberjack, so spending the trip targeting Amberjack would be a defeat uh, and a waste of time for you and us. So, yeah, we're throwing in a few Amberjack spots here and there, but we're not really targeting Amberjack. To me, targeting a species is when we're making multiple spots or stops through the trip to target that specific fish. And that's not the case for Amberjack. That will be the case for Red Snapper in this short Red Snapper season. And we went from having two or three long-range trips in those three weeks to now we have 20. So the reason we have 20 and the reason a lot of people have booked them is because of that red snapper reopener. So that's why we're going to uh, really focus on those red snapper. What's the best way to catch kingfish from a boat? Get out there on a boat. <laughs> uh, now, after you get out there on the boat, you want to either troll, flat line, or vertical jig. Those are basically, or you can catch a knocker rigging too. Uh, so those are the four ways that you would catch them. Uh, but most of the time we catch them either trolling or flatlining. So trolling near shore planers and spoons or those Rapala x wrap Magnum 20s or 30s. Offshore trolling that Nomad DTX, that uh, Rapala x wrap 30 or 40. Some skirted plugs. Uh, planers and spoons work really well for about the thrift. 35 miles or so. Uh, Flatlining doesn't change near shore, offshore. You cast out a thread fin, even a dead frozen thread fin. If you're drift fishing uh, or if the current's running strong enough, you can just cast out a dead thread fin and it will stay up on the surface. It'll be fine. The current's not really running, but you got a little bit of breeze. You can put on a little balloon and that balloon will be carried away from the boat. Use a biodegradable balloon, not the plastic stuff bad for the environment but biodegradable 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 yeah messing up it's been a long day it's been a long weekend <laughs> uh so use that balloon not the plastic stuff and uh that'll get it away from the boat and keep that frozen thread fin up in the water column uh or you can use live bait to uh flat line like a live blue runner uh cigar minnow sardine uh, goggle eyes, all good options for sure. Uh, but for sure, Blue Runners is the most common. Um, ba, 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 ba. Oh, that's so nice. I wanted to read it in my head first. <laughs> I didn't know which way it was going to go. Uh, someone said, I just want to say we went on another charter boat because it's the first charter I ever took my son on. And we came to your charter and fell in love with Hubbard's Marina, but went back for old time's sake just because we were in Tarpon area and went on a different trip. And it's just not the same. Hubbard's Marina is the best. So nice. That, that's why we do these shows right there, that kind of thing right there. It's all about you guys and uh, making memories, so appreciate it. Thank you very much. Do your boats supply power for electric reels? No, we don't recommend electric reels, nor do we supply power for them. You can bring an electric reel if you bring your own portable power supply uh, in the form of a small mobile battery or a marine grade like motorcycle style battery, one of those small ones, but you have to have it in an enclosed bucket, and we'd prefer you don't. Uh, because all our trips, 39, 44 hour trips, all our trips fish primarily less than 250 foot of water. There's no real reason to have an electric reel inside of 250 foot of water. Now, I say that all the time during all my videos, and uh, this past Monday we did that fun uh family and friends fam or captain and crew trip and staff from Hubbard's Marina. And I know when it hits YouTube, people are going to make comments because my dad fished all day long with an electric reel. And that's just because he's been doing this a long time and he just wanted to soak really big baits and catch the biggest fish. And he's a cheater. Uh, so I caught 10 to one what he caught. I caught big mangroves, yellowtail, scamp, 
Big red grouper, red snapper. Obviously had to throw those last two back, but I did very well. Limited out on uh, mangrove snapper. It was a great time. Uh, now, he caught like maybe three or four fish, but they were all quality, but he did not have a, a meat catching trip. He had a quality fish trip because he soaked bigger baits with heavier tackle, and he had that electric reel working in his favor too, so it made it easy. So keep that in mind, and what's funny is we talked about that last week during the show uh, about uh, someone asked, what's my favorite fish to target and why? And I said mangrove snapper because I, ca- I like catching a lot of fish quickly. I like targeting those quick-biting smart fish, and uh, I, I like that, that fast approach, that fast fishing style because I'm impatient. And then the very next day we went fishing, and that's how I was fishing, impatient, fast, catching a bunch of fish quickly, having a good time. While my dad is the exact opposite, he is uh, sit back and relax, actively fishing still, soaking really big baits on super heavy 100, 125-pound leaders with 10, 12-aught hooks, catching the biggest gag grouper of the day. Uh, but he worked for it. He, he soaked that bait for an hour and I caught five, six fish in that time. And I'm not that type of fisherman. I couldn't have done what he did and sat there for an hour and watched people around me catch fish after fish after fish. I would have cranked up that bait in five minutes and switched to lighter tackle to start catching mangrove snapper. And I even did that. I even tried to use heavier tackle at one point. After the first spot, I, I limited out pretty much on mangrove snapper. So I was like, all right. I'm going to switch to heavier tackle. I'm going to use bigger baits the rest of the trip. I got through two spots. Two spots. <laughs> Using 80 and 100-pound leaders. And I said, screw this. Cut them both off. Went to 50, 60-pound and started catching mangroves again. And that's just the way I am. And I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm satisfied to catch, I think, a, a 15, 16-pound scamp grouper and some big monster red snapper and red grouper and plentiful mangroves. Uh, compared to one or two really big gag grouper that most likely I would have lost if I hooked them on that lighter tackle. But I was using smaller chunks of bait trying to avoid them because I didn't want to get broke off, especially with seven other captains and ten crew members on the boat. If I would have got broke off, uh, it would have been uh, a long ride home (laughs) for me. But luckily, I didn't get broke off. So... Can you flatline on a 10-hour trip? And if so, would you use a jig head of a certain weight or no? So typically flatlining, no. I would just use a kingfish stinger stinger rig. Uh, Stinger rig is definitely the go-to option. Uh, We have it right on our fishing tips and tricks page. If you go to hubbardsmarina.com, you click uh, fishing trips, scroll down to fishing video links. There is a how to tie a kingfish rig. Smokey shows you that. Uh, use that rig, no weight, and uh, that works really well. And you can flatline on a 10-hour trip, especially on lighter loads. Just we ask that you talk to the captain and crew before setting out that flatline because that way if the boat's uh, swinging back and forth, uh, you want to make sure you talk to the captain and crew to make sure you're setting out that rod in the right area to where it's not going to cause tangles. Let's see, what other questions do we have tonight? Uh, Oh, I don't think that's for the show. You think that's for the show? All right. We took one of your ferry trips earlier to the islands this year while camping at Fort DeSoto, and it was wonderful. I didn't realize you do fishing trips as well. Which is funny because a lot of times it's the opposite. People are like, oh, I didn't realize you do island trips or dolphin tours. That's what I always hear. It's not. It's rare that you hear someone say, oh, yeah, we did your island trip. I didn't know you did fishing. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to see the opposite side of things. Yeah. Uh, but where you can find information, pricing, all that good stuff is through our website. Definitely the best uh, resource for anything Hubbard's Marina is through our awesome website. Some guy, Josh, he works on it. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty all right. Check yeah, it out sometime. It's, it's mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
definitely check out the website. It's got all the information. What bland, what brand fluorocarbon do I use? I primarily use Trickfish fluorocarbon. The reason why is that's what we carry at Hubbard's Marina, and I'm lazy. I also use the Bass Pro Shops Offshore Angler brand a lot, also because that's what they carry at Bass Pro Shops, and I'm lazy. So definitely check out uh, Bass Pro Shops Offshore Angler or that Trickfish brand. Uh, we also carry Yozuri fluorocarbon too. I've used that a few times. Uh, I really haven't noticed too much of a difference between fluorocarbon brands. Uh, it's all pretty, pretty standard. Uh, monofilament, I like uh, the Berkeley Pro Spec. Um, what's the other one I like a lot? The Diamond. Diamond is a new one. I used Diamond Braid on my two new Saltiga reels and uh, tried it out this past Monday. I really liked it a lot. I used to use Spider Wire Deep Blue Camo and uh, Dogfish Tackle talked me into the Diamond Momoi uh, braided line. And I've loved Diamond Momoi. Uh, monofilament so i tried out their braid and it, it worked really really well so i like that one too what kind of circle hooks do you use i prefer owner hooks owner hooks uh gamagatsu mustad those are the three brands i use the most again primarily just what we carry in the shop i'm not super picky when it comes to hooks the only time i get super picky when it comes to hooks is when it comes to the double snell mangrove snapper hooks, I want a thin wire hook with a small barb. That's what I'm going for when I'm looking for mangrove snapper hooks. And I find the owner hooks are typically my favorite when I'm looking for mangrove snapper double snell hooks. Uh, we run all year round, every day, year round. We are full time fishermen. We're not like those boats up there in uh, northern Gulf of Mexico around Orange Beach, Alabama, or Panama City, or Destin, or uh, Texas. The We're full-time fishermen here in the central west coast of Florida. And I hope some of my charter captain fishing friends from those other cities are watching right now because they love being called part-time fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> very, very much enjoy that. When you say that, so shout out to you guys. Oh, uh, that's funny. Thanks for setting me up for that joke. What other questions do we have here? We got 35 messages. We got to have some more questions in there. There was like seven of them that were the same. There's some, uh, everyone keeps asking about kingfish and you keep repeating yourself. Ah. So. So you're you're not showing me some questions because I already answered them. Because you already so, answered them. And if they so were paying well, attention... They I already answered them so well that you're not going to go back. Well, I mean, can you flatline on a 10-hour? Yes. Ask the captain. I did answer that one. Would you're you right. throw dead bait I, or I live bait? I didn't mean to question your prowess, Josh. I got Forgive you. Forgive me, sir. I'm on this end, okay? Never mind the man behind the curtain. Coming. Oh, all of a sudden. <laughs> uh. Uh, I am a Monday and Tuesday fisherman. This show works out great. Thank you. Ah, that's awesome. Appreciate you. Why is it illegal to fish the middle grounds? In which part can we fish? Uh, it is 100% not illegal to fish the middle grounds. We fish the middle grounds almost every week. Um, good evening, Dylan. What is your preferred brand of electronics and why? Interesting question. Funny you should ask that. So at Hubbard's Marina, we really like using the same model electronics, engine, anything. So that way our captains can get on one boat or this boat or that boat or this boat over here, and it's the same electronics, same rigging, same outboard engines. Shout out to Yamaha. Uh, so <laughs> that's why we like being one brand across the board because it makes it easy to keep excess parts it makes it easy for everybody to share knowledge, share information, share oils, lubricants, all that good stuff. I mean, it stinks when you have to have a Mercury brand outboard engine, lower unit set of tools and, and products. And then over here we have Yama Lube. It's super frustrating. So it's nice to have one set of everything the same. 
So all our outboard engines, we're moving to Yamaha outboards. Once uh, this supply chain issue gets figured out, we'll be fully Yamaha across all our boats. And then um, we're making the move over to Garmin. Uh, so we've used Furuno uh, heavily, and um, uh, we uh, are making the move to Garmin. I fell in love with Garmin because of this bad boy here, our Garmin watches, and also the Flying Hub 2 in 2016 when we got the Flying Hub 2 from Metal Shark Boats. They powered us up with a really cool Garmin machine. The Furuno machine on the Friendly just went bad, and uh, we're moving to Garmin. So across the fleet, we're going Garmin all the way around, and uh, we're looking forward to that. So tomorrow, we're actually purchasing a very large amount of electronics from Garmin. Mm. So I kinda, prefer. I feel like that question was maybe the Garmin rep. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Garmin doesn't even know that. They don't even I'm gonna, know that. I'm going to hit them up about that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you all see. tell everybody at Garmin how good we are. <laughs> and we got this little fishing show every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, well, it on. was really between Simrad and Garmin. My dad really likes Simrad. Um, and I like Simrad, too. Uh, but just Garmin is is more all around. It's more intuitive. And it's more realistic. Simrad is awesome. But to me, it's like Daiwa and Shimano. Simrad is like Shimano. Garmin's like Daiwa. They both do the same thing. And they're both good quality. But Simrad really likes Simrad. And they charge you more because it's Simrad. It's like Shimano. It's like the, the Talica and the Saltiga is the same reel, same quality. In my opinion, the Saltiga, Saltiga is even a little bit better. But the Talica is almost $200 more. They're the same reel. So it's the same idea with uh, Simrad and Garmin in my mind is they're the same product. They do the same thing. They have the same technology, but Simrad's going to charge you a couple hundred dollars more because it's Simrad. That's my argument, and that's how I won. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? We'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. But hopefully Garmin will work with us because I would love to go full Garmin across the board. To answer your question, Simrad, Garmin, Lowrance also makes good products. Uh, Furuno has lost it. Uh, we used to, we were fully Furuno for many, many years since 1932, <laughs> since electronics became a thing. We've always used Furuno products, and they just they stepped out of it. They just they just lost their market share. And uh, Garmin, Simrad, Lowrance, they've taken over. Um, Hummingbird is not a saltwater product. Do not buy Hummingbird in saltwater. Freshwater, whatever. They make good bass fishing stuff, I think, but not a saltwater product. Don't use it. <laughs> uh, where are, are we out of time? Garmin does make great watches. They gave they uh, hooked me up on this bad boy, and that's what made me fall in love with Garmin. So Garmin they gave me uh, two hundred dollars off this watch, and I'm going to spend fifty k. <laughs> Buying new electronics. Go talk to somebody. You before. win, Garmin. You win. <laughs> By the way, Garmin watches are not allowed on anything past a no. ten-hour fishing trip. And no, the, I can uh, literally control yes. the Flying Hub 2's um, course and speed through this watch. Let's. Uh, and people wonder why we can't we can't allow smartphones on the, or yeah. smart watches on the boat. You I guys can, are the reason we can't have nice things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's really nuts. And Furuno's, I've always used Furuno's. Chris uh, Smalley, you're right. The Fish Finder is great. Furuno Fish Finders is always what we've used. And even now in this conversation, uh, when I brought it up to my dad, he was like, absolutely not. We're not changing from Furuno on the Florida because we put in a extremely expensive uh, 3KW transducer through hole specialty fittings. I mean, this transducer is super bad to the bone when we were fishing in 800 to 1200 foot of water on those deep drop trips. So we really went all out with Furuno. Uh, so he didn't want to touch it, but we're going Garmin. And uh, Garmin has an extremely nice bottom fishing interface or bottom machine interface. You can actually rewind, which is really cool. So you can swipe back and you can click the fishing show or the fish show that you saw two miles back, and it will pop the GPS coordinate right there onto your plotter, which is something Furuno has never even begun to think about or began to think, uh, you know what I mean. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's it's cool technology what Garmin has going for them, and they only seem to get better and better and better. So definitely excited about the move uh, to Garmin. So uh, with that, uh, we're wrapping the main show up here. We do have our supporters after show on Facebook and YouTube starting shortly after this show. We're going to start our supporters after show uh, at 9.50. That gives us a 15-minute break there between the shows to get that supporters after show rocking. And it gives you time to join us in our supporters group for some behind-the-scenes info, better connectivity, more behind-the-scenes information, quicker. Um, Definitely a cool added value. Plus, you get the after show, which to me is worth it right there. It's fun. So join us for the supporters after show at 9.50. Uh, Don't forget that every Friday morning we have our Fox 13 news segment, 8.15 a.m. Every Saturday morning, Real Animals radio show, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Every Sunday night, right here on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook and Instagram and YouTube channel for our live show. And then don't forget, this Wednesday, October 13th, we've got our Fat Cat Tavern Fishing Club Fishing Conversation starting at 7 p.m. Then November 6th, Saturday, November 6th, 2 p.m., we've got our first Bass Pro Shop seminar since pre-COVID, since I think it was January 2020, so I am pumped. Saturday, November 6th, join us for that event, 2 p.m. Santa Claus comes to Bass Pro Shops uh, 5 p.m. that day. So join us Saturday, November 6th at Bass Pro Shops. And don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Let's see who won our 39-hour fishing trip for one guest. 39-hour fishing trip for one guest. The lucky winner is Sarah Cash from Indiana. Sarah Cash from Indiana. Appreciate you tuning in, Sarah, and hanging out with us. And congratulations on that 39-hour win. The rest of y'all, hopefully we'll see you soon inside John's Pass at Fish Famous Hubbard's Marina. And uh, hopefully we'll see you out there on the water. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. We'll see you next week.